Question to Robert. Um, how much have you created Sherlock Holmes yourself and how much comes from the books or have you read them? And a question to Numi. Um, how difficult is it to move from one role to another? Uh, here you are, friends, Gypsy, and, and in Finland we know you as, uh, from the Millennium series and also you uh, were Swedish Finn in Berlin August's film. Okay, yeah. Well, it was, um, I think the biggest step for me was to step into the English language because I didn't speak English like two and a half, three years ago. So um, I was afraid that I was going to be caught up in a, in a prison of, you know, f feeling that I need to translate everything from Swedish into English and not being able to improvise and ad lib and feel free and kind of live in the language. But um, so that was kind of the biggest step. Um, but what surprised me so much and and what was kind of amazing to discover was, I think it's very much thanks to those boys, men's, um, that they, the way they worked and the way they just kind of embraced me and the way Warner Brothers took care of me, it felt like everybody just kind of grabbed me and pulled me in and, and, and I forgot that I was nervous and it felt like I became one of the boys and I forgot about that it was not my language. So, it surprised me because it was so intimate and it felt so much as a teamwork. So everything else kind of faded away. And Mr. Law and I, I think should speak to this briefly because I think it's, it's a big part of, uh, of, of what people have responded to is from the minute we met and Guy got us together and, and, um, and Joel and Lionel were hoping we would hit it off. We cracked a book and we started kind of basically getting chills, going, hey, Watson was never this chubby old kind of doofus with his foot in a waste paper basket. He was dynamic. He was in the Army. And Holmes never wore a deerstalker cap. And there was, in others, we felt like we had a chance to not rewrite the history of Holmes, but in some ways to extrapolate from the untapped actual history. Mm. And also, you know, great characters, it, you, you can compare Holmes and Watson in a way to great Shakespearean characters that have been played by hundreds of actors over many, many years and each one of those is a different interpretation and the, it, the fact is the source material can take that kind of interpretation um, and this is our interpretation. It's a beautiful looking film. I wanted to ask you, Guy, about some of the locations and the sort of sumptuous look of the film and also ask all of you whether you've seen the Sherlock, the British TV Sherlock, and how you think you compare to that? Um, well, the, the, the general aesthetic, um, you know, we spend a lot of time on that. Um, but that was a, a decision that would sort of evolve, really. Um, Philip Ruslow and myself, uh, who's the DP, um, sat down and we went through a sort of plethora of uh, mixed formats uh, to, to come up with something that... Uh, we hope is original, uh, and it should look somewhat an antiqu an what did you say? antiqued, huh? antiquated. Thank you, uh, antiquated. Um, but at the same time, you've got all the benefits of uh, uh, technical evolution with film. So we, we we spent a good deal of time coming up with the aesthetic. There was another question, wasn't there? Yeah, uh, about the uh, TV series. Rob, you said it. We're fans. We're definitely fans. Uh, Again, this all starts with the books. We love the books. We're all doing our different interpretations uh, of the books. We love the fact that it takes place in modern times. Uh, the performances by, um, by both the actors are phenomenal. It's great, and it's great that it's such, a, uh, you know, that it's such an amazing body of work that it, it can sustain two different interpretations at the same time.